Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and I heartily welcome to all the participants of this course uh, uh, for which is designed for uh, MS project management and the title of the course is Management Organizational Policies and Practices. Um, before I start with the contents of the uh, course, I would like to give a brief introduction of myself, my academic and professional background. I have basically done my master's in economics from uh, Punjab University in 2002 and after that I uh, joined the banking sector in Pakistan and served uh, with Bank Alpha Limited for almost three years as management banker. Then I went to um, Netherlands for my higher studies and did my uh, master's in business administration with specialization in human resource management from University of Twente in the Netherlands which is a renowned university uh, the world over. So uh, after doing my uh, MBA in the year 2008, I immediately started with my uh, PhD project and I finished my PhD in three years time. Um, so in 2011, after finishing my PhD, I came back to Pakistan and joined uh, Comsats Institute of Information Technology as assistant professor and I'm working here as professor in management. Um, uh, right, so this was the introduction of, uh, this was my introduction and now I begin with the course introduction. So I would, uh, before starting with the uh, contents of today's lecture, I would like you to know what we are, how this course is designed and what we are going to cover for this course. Uh, so the course outline is we would start with the introduction to management which is also the first lecture of today then we move to the man, uh, to how the managers need to manage strategically in today's world so that would constitute our second lecture then we have uh, organizational external environment means that what are the external forces that affect an, uh, an organization and how the managers need to deal with those external forces then we also have an internal environment of the organization which means that what are the internal um, uh, opportunities or what are the internal strengths and weaknesses of the organization and how the organization has to deal with those um, uh, internal strengths or weaknesses that the organization has. Then our next topic for this uh, course would be corporate global and firm level strategies. So the strategies at the corporate level, strategies at the global level and the strategies at the firm level they differ. Business units have different strategies uh, and uh, the um, corporate strategies are different. There is a corporate parent and there is a business unit level so we would see that how the strategies of the firms differ uh, as per the levels of the firms and then we uh, uh, the next uh, topic of uh, in the course would be implementing strategies that is uh, and the issues that are faced by the management in implementing the different strategies that are developed by the organization how the management uh, can um, cater to the different issues that may arise then we'll talk about organizational structure um, uh, different organizations can uh, come up with different uh, structures for example structure can be um, uh, very much flat or it can be bottom up or it can be top down so uh, there are a number of uh, different organizational structures would we'll be seeing that how uh, the different organizational structures lead to different management issues and how the, the different management styles need to be different uh, uh, as per the organizational structures and how the organizational strategy need to match the organizational structure to come up with optimum um, results then we have the ethics and social responsibility what is the social responsibility of the managers what are the uh, ethical standards that need to be set in the organization how the ethics of the managers themselves affect the decision making and uh, things like that and then we have planning how the managers can plan how they need to plan how planning affects management okay then we have the decision making the organizational decision making managerial decision making uh, whether it needs to be the managers need to decide individually or whether it needs to be a participative decision making so we'll talk about the decision making in this uh, during this lecture then the next lecture would be uh, managing information information management is highly important because uh, because uh, the there are lots of changes that are taking place in this today's corporate world and uh, managers need to have sound information systems where they can get information from the external environment that and they can assimilate and use that information for their company in order to uh, produce the strategies that are aligned with the challenges of the external environment then we have the uh, control of course, uh, the, all the managerial policies, the objectives that an organization formulate, they are um, 
they may not prove to be that effective if there are not enough control mechanisms in the organization. So uh, we'll be uh, dealing with uh, different uh, evaluation strategies, different feedback options, and uh, different other controlling uh, possibilities that the management may use to uh, uh, for the uh, effective results, for the better results, for achievement of organizational objectives, and for the evaluation. Then we have the global management. Um, next, uh, we'll be dealing with the innovation management, mm, the innovations, why innovations are important, how managers can make their organizations more innovative, and uh, stuff like that. Then uh, the next topic would be the change management. Uh, of course, uh, as we discussed earlier, as I told you earlier a little bit, that uh, changes um, uh, are the hallmark of today's organizations. There are lots of changes taking place. The world is really adapting and uh, the world is becoming global village. So. Um, uh, how the changes can be managed well, what are the different challenges that the managers can face, well, what are the different resistances that the managers can face. We'll be talking more about change management in this lecture. Then we have the designing adaptive organizations. Why the organizations need to be adaptive, we'll discuss in this in this section. Um, and um, then we have the managing diversity. With the, with the changes in the population mix, there is uh, the, the diversity management is a big challenge for today's managers. So the managers may have to face the lawsuits, they may have to go to courts uh, if they uh, if the, uh, they are not uh, giving equal employment opportunities, for example, to the diverse workforce, if they are not maintaining a fair portion of diverse workforce in their hiring and their selection procedures, if they are not following the diversity policies, uh, they uh, may have to suffer huge financial uh, losses as well as the reputational risks. So we'll be discussing in detail about the different diversity management issues, diversity management practices um, in this section. Then our next section would cater to the managing teams. Of course, uh, the, the, the work designs, the work systems are changing with the changing nature of the organizations. Now more and more work is uh, revolving around uh, teams. So the concept of teamwork is increasing compared to the concept of individual style of working which used to be um, uh, in the traditional um, classical organizations. Then we have, uh, then in the next section we'll be seeing the determining human resource needs. Well, they could be different human resource needs such as finding and developing qualified employees, their performance appraisal management and retention. So these are very uh, detailed topics we'll be dis discussing them in uh, individual lectures um, and then our next lecture would be on managing service and manufacturing operations so it would be more related to the uh, process or management as well and as well as to the a little bit we'll be talking about the product management about the process management and about the manufacturing concerns and about the service concerns how how they are managed then we'll be seeing that why motivation is important motivation is a uh, uh, is a very interesting topic as well as it has gained huge attention not only from the um, uh, not only from the human resource managers but also from economists also from organizational psychologists also from industrial psychologists and also from organizational behavior theorists so it has uh, attained attracted a huge amount of attention from all these different circles and all these different academicians because it has huge implications for the practitioners, the motivation, motivation of employees, motivation of employer, whose motivation. So we'll be discussing in detail the different motivation theories, why they emerged in this session. And in our next lecture, we'll again talk about motivation because as I told you that it's very uh, important topic in all the different areas. So we'll be discussing that how mo we can motivate our employees through the design of work and what are its implications for the employees, for the organization with respect to the outcomes for the employees and for the organizations. Our next session would be, a lecture would be on uh, leadership theories. We'll be discussing uh, the different leadership theories, charismatic leadership, it can be transactional leadership, transformational leadership, which models we are talking about. We'll be discussing in detail about the different leadership theories, their implications for the uh, followers, their implications for the subordinates, how the different leadership styles, different leadership theories lead to different employee outcomes, lead to different subordinate outcomes, how they are related to the leader effectiveness 
and how they are related to the organizational effectiveness if at all then our next session would be managing communication communication management of course it's really important and the importance of Im uh, importance of communication is a uh, increasingly recognized um, earlier there was concept of one-way communication top-down communication all the decisions they were communicated from the top management from the middle management to the uh, shop floor workers to the lower level employees but now things are changing because of the change because of the changing nature of challenges that the organizations are facing it is no more possible to have this kind of autocratic decision making style autocratic style of uh, communication and uh, automatic autocratic style of management that is not possible anymore therefore uh, communication needs to be uh, uh, managed properly how it needs to be managed it doesn't need to be a two-way two, two -way communication does it need to be a bottom-down lateral or what kind of communication it needs to be will be discussing the different communication issues in this section and then we have we will be talking about stress management of course in today's uh, corporate world where that there are increasing challenges for the organizations they're ultimately transferring into the challenges for the employees they're uh, how the job of the employee can be stressful under what circumstances it can be stressful what can be the different stressors for the employees so um, uh, work-life balance for example can be a stressor for the employee or there can be a number of other organizational individual factors that can lead to the individual stress so what are the rules and responsibilities for the employee when it comes to the stress management what are the rules and responsibilities of the employer when it comes to the stress management um, we'll be discussing all such issues um, in this session then we have another interesting session which is on personality traits and outcomes so um, uh, we'll be talking about how different individuals whether they be employees or they be employers or they be managers how they can exhibit different personality traits and how the different personality traits can be related to the differential or outcomes well then how uh, um, employees who are prone to uh, dissatisfaction how what the managers can do for that kind of employees what is the role of the managers how the managers can uh, build some individualized relationship with the employees depending upon their personality traits so um, again the implications for management when vis-a-vis -vis the personality traits of the um, workers in the organization so um, then our uh, next topic in this course would be justice fair treatment and dismissal management justice uh, is of course an important um, issue it can again lead to lawsuits uh, if uh, employees perceive that they're not being treated fairly or justly so uh, what are the uh, what are the different dimensions of justice what is fair treatment how employees can be treated fairly what would be considered unfair treatment when uh, an, uh, a manager can dismiss an employee what is wrongful discharge what is termination at will and topics like that will be covered under this section then we have the safety and health management um, safety and health management again what are the different safety uh, hazards that 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 can be there in the workplace uh, how safety hazards can lead to uh, different lawsuits and other financial losses for the employer and the employee what can be the different health challenges that the employees uh, may have or that the organization may face from the employees so all these issues what are the rules and what are the responsibilities of the two parties when it comes to the safety and health of the employees so we'll be discussing these uh, in this issue um, in this um, section that what is the role of the manager in dealing with these issues then we have the labor relations and collective bargaining so uh, of course management is also about uh, um, is uh, also about managing the labor it's where labor of course the employees they are one of the very uh, critical pillar of the organization they are very critical stakeholder of the, in the organization so um, re relationship management with the labor and the different collective bargaining principles different collective bargaining agreements what can be bargained what cannot be bargained what may be bargained um, all these kind of issues the, the issues of strikes the issues of um, uh, other important nature the, that are relating to the industrial relations 
they would be dealt with in this section okay so this is the um, outline that we are going to discuss for the uh, for this course and there might be a little up and down in this outline maybe it is not uh, uh, followed in the order it has been shown here 100 percent but most of it would be followed in the order it has been uh, shown here so the uh, reference material uh, for this book of course at this level at the level of uh, mphil or ms that you are in uh, we don't have one textbook that i could refer you to um, or which would be sufficient for you to prepare this course because this course has not been prepared from one textbook it has been prepared with the help of uh, a number of different books but um, mainly uh, the book uh, by Chuck Williams has been used and the name of the book is management other than that as I told you there are a number of other reference books that have been used which are on organizational management and which are on strategy some of the topics have been taken from books on human resource management they have also been utilized for the purpose of preparation of this uh, these lectures and this course so um, you could refer to all those different books the contents uh, would be most of the contents would be overlapping in most of the books on organizational management most of the books on human resource uh, strategy but mainly the books from management have been followed right so the contents would be same if uh, for most of the books if you read most of the books you'll find similar contents okay and then uh, we have the um, of course the online search uh, for some of the information uh, we have also collected by online search through Wikipedia through Google or through other online sources from other from some journals or from some other good articles in the reputed journals some of the information has also been taken from there um, okay uh, and uh, one more thing that I would like to uh, tell you before starting with today's lecture uh, is the um, is how you are going to uh, get marks what is the division of marks okay uh, first um, as you know at this at this level at the MPhi level you don't have any uh, sessionals you will be having one midterm examination and one final examination before your midterm examination you will be having one quiz uh, and after your midterm examination you will be having another quiz or assignment and um, <coughs> so um, now the weightage of these uh, different assignments quizzes and marks for your uh, for your midterm examination you have 25 percent marks your final examination constitutes 50 percent marks so it makes a total of 75 percent marks and the 25 percent marks is for your quizzes and assignments so uh, this is how you will be judged for the course okay so let's now start formally with the uh, with the lecture with the first lecture of today as I told you earlier it's going to be introduction to management to organizational policies and practices to the different uh, to uh, you will basically be developing an understanding of what we mean by management when we talk about management when we talk about organizational policies and practices we are basically talking about management how to manage an organization effectively in a way that and how to develop the organizational policies and practices in a way that organizational objectives are met so management is about uh, organizational policies and practices are also a way of managing the organization because policies and practices help in managing the um, the in managing the goals of the organization so uh, f very precisely um, what you can expect uh, in today's lecture or what you need to learn after today's lecture is finished what we expect from you to learn is you'd be, you should be able to describe what management is then secondly you need to explain what are the main four functions of management then you need to describe different kinds of managers explain the major roles and sub roles that managers perform in their jobs explain what companies look for in managers then you need to discuss the top mistakes that managers might make in their jobs describe the transition that employees go through when they are promoted to management and explain how and why companies can create competitive advantage through people so our last session would be on competitive advantage 
through people which would also lead us to the next lecture which would be on the strategic management how to manage people strategically that is how to gain competitive advantage through people so we'll be briefly touching upon all these different aspects during this introductory lecture and all these different aspects would be covered in detail in the upcoming lectures okay if i um, if i open the case with uh, giving an example from AT&T which is the largest telecommunication company in the world uh, it might be interesting for you to know that they spend around 350 million dollars every 3 years on management consultancy so they give fee to management consultants for providing them the services on how to manage their organization how to manage their people effectively they take that kind of services from the consultants from the management consultants and pay them around 350 dollars a uh, 350 million dollars every 3 years which is a very huge amount why is that that is because of the increasingly acknowledged importance of effective management within the organization so um many of the studies many of the researches report that the organizations that use effective management practices they have around 10 to 15% higher return on investment than the organizations that do not use effective management or they do not employ effective management practices also effective managers they have been reported to be um uh, to uh, get better customer satisfaction why through the mediating role of employees effective managers are supposed are uh, reported to be um, to draw positive satisfaction from their employees from their workers and that satisfaction of the workers of the employees then translates into happy customers happy employees only happy employees can lead to happy customers and employees would be happy when they are satisfied with the management styles with when the management is effective employees would be happy when employees would be happy customers would be happy so if the customer satisfaction is there customer happiness is there of course the company is going to prosper customers are going to be more loyal and the company is going to gain more and more sales and more and more profits and more and more returns okay so um, there these two three examples were to uh, give you to give you an understanding of why understanding different management issues is important because it is directly linked to different outcomes that are most critical to the organization okay then what is management management is getting work done through others not doing the work yourself it is getting work done through others through other people managing other people getting your tasks done through other people uh, let me here give you an example of uh, pat carrigan pat carrigan if you might be uh, familiar with this name before he is manager at uh, general motors car manufacturing uh, part plants um previously he was just an uh, elementary school teacher and now he is the manager at car par car parts manufacturing plant so uh, it would be interesting for you to know that um he uh, in his own words he says that he has never uh, he has never manufactured even one single part of the car himself and neither he plans to do that because he says that his job is not to do the work himself but his job is to ensure that there is a conducive environment for his workers to produce the desired output in time and um efficiently so um if we go to the previous slide we see that one management is getting work done through others but that is not enough it should be done efficiently and it should be done effectively so efficiency entails minimum waste effort and expense so when we'll say that the work has been done efficiently when it is done with minimum waste 
when it is done with minimum amount of effort which is exerted on the work and when it is done with minimum expense so the costs are lower to do that work to get that output waste is lowest to do to get that output and effort is also low to get that output so then that work is efficient then you say that you are doing it efficiently and the other component is effectiveness effectiveness is accomplishing accomplishing tasks that help fulfill organizational objectives so um, here we uh, to further uh, highlight the importance of these two aspects of management I, I have an example of Chrysler here Chrysler um, is uh, a very uh, leading um, car company you know it's a uh, top of the line car company in the world and their immediate competitors are General Motors Ford they are their immediate competitors they noticed uh, around two decades or three decades back in 1990s that their uh, their profits were declining their sales were declining and their market share was declining although they were giving their output very efficiently which means that their costs were lower than the cost of their competitors so their cars were cheaper than the cars of General Motors and Ford but still they were running out of market share they were running out of profits um, then uh, they the management of the company the top management of the company it changed the designs of the car it brought new designs new shapes of the car it, they did market search they did survey on the customers they did survey on the needs of the customers and they redesigned their products they brought in new cars in the market which sold like hotcakes and they again captured huge market share and profitability returned so this is an example to show that it's the only the efficiency is not sufficient to stay you abreast in competition you also need to be effective along with efficient and the management is responsible to gain the output which is both efficient and which is both effective only efficient is not enough so um, <coughs> our next uh, section is on management functions management functions uh, management can uh, these are classical management functions which you'll find in any book of management these four functions first one is planning the second is organizing third is leading and four is controlling let's see them one by one planning is determining organizational goals and means for achieving them right so you plan because you want to know what are the organizational goals and the means which are to achieve them if you do not plan what happens let's see we have an example uh, there there is this, there is this meta-analysis the results of which uh, I'm reporting here they show that general mental ability of the candidates that is 76 percent related to the performance of the candidates or the performance of the employees so the employees who are who have general mental ability they you have 76 percent more chances to pe perform better at the workplace than the employees who are lower on general mental ability so what what are the implications of these findings for our uh, discussion that we are making now it is highly important if the managers they do not plan and they make for example the hiring or they make their selections uh, very um, haphazardly or in an ill-planned way or non-strategically then what would happen is that they, they would lose this probability if on the other hand they make their selection procedures very selective they may they uh, uh, conduct tests at the beginning at, in, during their selections they make structured interviews to make sure that the candidates that they're hiring they have more mental ability or they're high on mental ability so they screen only the candidates who are high on mental ability then they would have higher chances that they have hired the right candidates for their job so this is the importance of planning then uh, we have the organizing organizing is deciding where decisions will be made 
who will do what kinds of jobs what will be the nature of job what will be the job description and who will be doing that job whether that person is fit for that job or not and who is best fit for the job so who will work for whom that is what will be the reporting relationships so whether it would be a higher hierarchy or it would be a flatter or it would be in teams so this is all the organizing of work and the organizing of processes organizing of jobs organizing of job design then uh, we have the third management function which is leading managers need to be leaders when we talk when we say that they need to be leaders we this means that they, they need to be inspirational for their subordinates for the employees and they need to be motivating the employees they need to take the employees out of out of the box they need to inculcate that out of the box thinking in their employees the employees should come out of their self interest and start working in the interest in the higher interest of the organization so leading means inspiring the employees leading means motivating the employees here i have an example of uh, ceo of xerox n you must be familiar with the name of n she is a, a very famous ceo of xerox so the key to successful leadership is communicating with the company's most important constituents employees and customers then we have controlling controlling is monitoring progress toward goal achievement and taking corrective action when needed without control without adequate control mechanisms executed by the managers managers won't be able to even understand where they stand where their company stands with how much of their goals are achieved what were the organizational goals what were the policies that they made to uh, achieve those goals and where are the loopholes if those goals are not achieved um, what changes do they need to make in their organizational policies to achieve those goals all these things would come through proper controlling mechanisms so managers need to implement proper controlling mechanisms proper evaluating mechanisms and they need to take proper corrective actions where and when needed so what is the control process in the first step what we do is that we set standards to achieve goals next we compare actual performance to uh, to the standards of course that that's what always happens first we have the standards to achieve goals that okay i want to uh, get the sales of 500 million dollars in next one month from this department and then you compare the actual performance with the set goals okay then at the end of the month you see that you have uh, sales of 400 uh, only but you had a target of 500 so there is a, a deficit of 100 and then you make changes to return performance to standard so the standards have not met met the performance standards have not met what were the reasons why the standards were not met you need to make an evaluation of um, at the different steps whether it is because of the poor performance of the employee or it is because of something which is out of control of the employees maybe uh, it is because of the economic downturn it is because the whole the industry did not perform well during that period or what are the different reasons if the reasons are within the hands of the organization or within the hands of the employees then you need to take corrective actions in that direction and vice versa then we have the effective managers you see um, we discussed the four functions of management and the studies report that effective managers are those that perform these four functions of management that is those who plan those who organize those who lead and those who control better they are more effective managers at at and nt whose example i gave you in the opening case i told there the probability of promotion is higher for the employees who plan better they they have higher probability of becoming managers so that shows the importance of planning that shows the importance of planning as well as the other functions of management then we have old versus new management styles the functions that we talked about just now which is planning controlling leading organizing they are also termed as the classical management functions we also have some new management functions or the new management styles because of the changes that so many changes that have taken place in the organization the new challenges that the organizations are facing 
the organizational structures have basically changed. Previously, they used to be more hierarchical, and now the structures are more flattened. Right? Then now there is more and more concept of teams, self-managed teams. Previously, the work was organized around um, um, around individuals, not is organized around teams. Previously, there was a concept of functional uh, uh, functional units. Now, they are spread into uh, the concept of uh, now there are divisions now there there are metrics organizations and so on so the the structures are more flatter now compared to earlier so what implications it has for managers what implications it has for the style of management previously the managers used to consider themselves as boss and today the managers consider themselves or deal themselves with others in this as if they are the sponsors, as if they are the team leaders, as if they are the internal consultants and not boss. So the attitude of the managers has changed. Then the reporting relationships of were very firm. They, they were very well defined earlier in the earlier organizations, in the, con in the traditional organizations, in the classical management. The re relationships were uh, very crisp. They were very well defined that who will report to whom versus today anyone can come to the go to the manager's office and make a discussion with the manager it's more easier to approach the manager today people employees are more frank with the manager today and uh, um, the distance that used to prevail between the manager and the subordinate that is vanishing then the individual decisions uh, uh, used to take place in the classical management style um, the manager used to make the decisions himself but now the new management believes more in participative management where they also take the opinion of all the employees in any important decision that has been taken that has to be taken by the organization then earlier there used to be concept of long hours inflexible working hours long working hours now there is more and more flexibility in the working hours um, managers more focus on the results managers more focus on the task being done then on the time or that is being spent in the organization earlier the managers used to keep the proprietary company information secret but now that information is increasingly being shared with others so these are the uh, few basic differences that have been noticed in the management styles that are increasingly prevalent now We'll be discussing all these in detail when we'll be talking uh, about organizational structure in one of our lectures. Then we have the, um, I just told you that, okay, the management styles have changed. The new styles of management are uh, different than they used to be earlier. But it does not mean that the classical management style or the classical management function has become obsolete the four functions of ma uh, uh, classical functions of management but that we discussed earlier they are still being performed by the managers they're the basic functions that the managers must perform they must plan they must control they must lead and they must organize um, here in this section we'll see a mix of the two um, functions that are being performed now in addition to the classical functions of management so the first function is making things happen so the managers they need to basically make sure that things are being done right it, it's not only about the steps that the managers are taking it's about the outcomes managers need to show that the outcomes are achieved that the goals are uh, are achieved that the objectives are met so need, they need to plan as we discussed the planning earlier it's the same classical old function of management they need to do the decision making they need to manage the information and they need to control right so we have an example of William and who is the CEO of lands and it's a successful um, uh, catalog retailer it introduced uh, the so William and in introduced a number of different management techniques the latest management techniques such as principal appra uh, performance appraisals which were based on peer reviews then the production teams training courses effective communication lost or undelivered orders um, were the result of that all those different techniques that the CEO of Lanzen introduced why 
although the different uh, techniques that he introduced they are not bad production teams they are not bad performance appraisals based on peer reviews are not bad he introduced almost around 20 training courses that is not bad either and effective communication is also a desirable management practice so all these management practices are desirable but then do you uh, do you know why it resulted in uh, chaos for the organization it resulted in lost orders from the uh, from the customers and it resulted in negative overall output by the organization or by the employees the reason was he basically introduced all these changes too fast which the employees could not absorb as a result of the product the formation of teams they had a number of meetings and the employees reported that it was they did not get enough time to do the actual work they were more busy doing meetings than working doing the work actually right so um, employees were actually more resistant to the so many sudden changes and so many changes that had been implemented in the organization all at once so the employees they were working for the organization for a number of years in that smooth pace but when all of a sudden they were introduced to these changes they were more resistant to these changes and then they actually needed some time to get accustomed to those changes so uh, but the William and the CEO of lands and he uh, could not effectively introduce these management practices so the manager needs to know how he has to make things happen In introduction of these management practices even could not work effective working effectively is important getting output is important how you have to get that output and then we have the meeting the competition uh, that is the uh, ne next aspect of management so this is the new style of management the new aspect or new function that the managers today must perform which were which were not that critical in the classical management functions why because of the fast pace of today's economy because of the increasing competition that the organizations are facing from the world over you know there is global management there are free trade ag agreements as a result of the, that uh, world trade order uh, organizations or uh, all, all the countries they need to uh, increasingly reduce their tra tariffs and start trade with all parts of the world so as a result of that there are significant challenges from both for the developing nations and for the developed nations in their own terms there are but there are reduced uh, falling entry uh, uh, reduced entry barriers they're falling entry barriers which means that the competition is getting more and more stiff it is more possible and it is easily possible for the newcomers to enter the market then we have shorter uh, shorter product life cycles the life cycles they used to be more um, they used to be longer earlier than they are now now there are in there are more and more innovations as a result of that that technology there is more and more technological development and as a result of that uh, the um, uh, new products replace the older products the products get old very soon right so uh, managers need to understand this competition and they need to meet this competition to stay in business then we have the organizational strategy they need to formulate their organizational strategy as per the challenges of the external environment we'll be talking more about organizational strategy in our next lecture so we don't talk much of it here then we have the innovation and change how the managers need to innovate and how they need to manage the change the change that William and could not manage how you need to manage that change what are the challenges when you introduce some change in the organization managers need to understand this then designing adaptive organizations what do we mean by adaptive organizations organizations that are learning organizations that are flexible organizations that adapt to the changes taking place in the external environment so how you can develop those organizations managers need to understand that we have an example of IBM here IBM was once market leader right and it had most of the share in the in its field and uh, it lost its share from 80 percent to 8 percent only in the 1980s because of the stiff competition that it faced from other competitors such as compaq and dell 
so um, uh, what does this um, entail for our discussion it means that you need to be really adaptive you need to be really um, responsive to the environment to the market in order to uh, in order to capture the market share and in order to sustain that market share in order to hold that market share IBM it was the market leader but you see drum drastically lost its market share from 80 to 8 percent and its competitors gain that share um, so how the org this is an increasing challenge for the managers to keep their organizations adaptive responsive to change flexible so that they can keep their market share then uh, another um, management uh, function that uh, the managers they must perform is organizing people projects and processes so management is largely about people about managing people about managing diverse workforce about managing teams about managing human resource systems about managing service and manufacturing operations here I have an example for you uh, from Ford um, when Ford uh, purchased Jaguar the management of Ford they advised the new management of Jaguar to uh, visit the to, to, to meet the, the survivors to, or the remaining employees because um, they had advised the Jaguar to um, initially lay off um, around one third of the company employees and meet the survivors so what the Jaguar's new management when it met the uh, survivors um, they uh, and asked them to make such efforts which can increase the customer loyalty and customer satisfaction such as be more and more accommodating more and more pleasing more and more welcoming to the customers so that the customer satisfaction can be enhanced the employees they were very true towards the new management of Jaguar and the employees responded that if you cannot uh, if you if you need to fire one-third of the company employees and if you cannot take care of the company employees how do you expect the employees to take care of the customers so customers employee satisfaction is really important managing people appropriately is really important the new management of Jaguar on hearing this response from the employees from the survivors they were really shocked and they did not know what to say so the, a good manager it's a quality of a good manager needs to know how he has to organize his people how he has to organize his projects how he has to organize his processes if he cannot manage the people better he cannot get the work done to people then we have the next important management function which is leading leading by motivation leading through through leadership providing good leadership communication management they're all the different aspects of leading um, here again we have an example of Herb Keller who is the founder of Southwest Airlines she was a great leader she was a great motivator she used to motivate and lead people through her very famous style and she was a style of jokes teller uh, and storyteller so she was famous as jokester and storyteller so she used to keep the company environment very light and full of fun and people used to work in a very light environment and they used to stay motivated they really liked her style of leadership they used the people used to love her their leader then we have the different kinds of managers we have the top managers we have middle managers we have first line managers and we have team leaders um well top managers uh, chief executive officers chief operating officers chief financial officers and chief information officer they are all top managers in a company what are the different responsibilities of top managers we see that we have the different cadres of the management different levels of the managers as i told you earlier and we see that how these managers are responsible for different for performing different roles for performing different jobs with vis-a-vis -vis their uh, levels of management so the higher management they have different roles to perform the lower managers have different roles to perform and middle managers have different roles to perform here we see the responsibilities of top manager first 
So uh, top manager in the fir uh, first place is responsible for creating a context for change, which means that top manager is responsible for making a vision for the company and giving a mission for the company and communicating it to the lower level managers and to the employees of the company that okay this is the vision of the company this is the mission of the company this is the direction that the company is going to work in this is the strategy we are going to follow at the highest level at the top level um, I have the example of CEO of General Motors at Kodak both those CEOs they were fired because they could not give this kind of vision and this kind of mission to the company then we have the uh, second responsibility of the top managers that is developing commitment and ownership in employees the strongest signals that the employees receive they come from the top managers so if the employees perceive that the top management is commitment towards organizational policies and organizational goals the employees will perceive those signals as very strong and they will act accordingly if they perceive that the top management is not sincere or it is not committed towards the goals it will also work likewise and um, again if the employees they perceive that the top management other than only does not own only the organizational policies but it also owns the employees it also takes care of the employees it also cares for their needs then employee commitment would be different so it is the responsibility of the top managers to inculcate this feeling of ownership of being owned by the management to the employees employees need to have this perception that they are being owned by the management of the company again we have the example of uh, Herb Keller who is the CEO of Southwest Airlines Southwest Airlines you must be fam familiar with it is one of the cheapest airlines in America and one of the um, uh, one of the most profitable airlines in America and um, Herb Kelher she was often found sitting with the shop floor workers of her company at four o'clock in the night discussing their problems giving them the sense of ownership so sitting with the mechanic of the company at four o'clock so mechanic is the most junior person in the organization and Herb Keller as CEO is the most senior person in the organization a most senior person sitting with the most junior person what kind of signal what kind of message do you think it com conveys to the employees and how much the management cares for the employees how much the management is committed towards the employees then we have creating a positive organizational culture through language and action that is really important responsibility of the top managers what message do they convey to the employees through their language and through their actions uh, CEO of one company reports that he before sending the different memos to the employees in the organization he writes those memos 10 to 20 times at least and then sends the final memo to the uh, to the employees because he says that the language in the memo is really important it will send important signals to the employees therefore he writes it again and again before he finalizes it and um, then we have the example of David Glass David Glass uh, if you are familiar with he is the um, uh, CEO of Walmart um, he often tells the stories of uh, thriftiness of Sam Walton Sam Walton was the founder of Walmart he often tells the stories of uh, the of the thriftiness of Sam Walton to the employees of the Walmart so he no, not only tells the stories of the thriftiness of Wal, uh, Sam Walton to the employees but he also practices it himself so it is important to keep telling the stories to the employees of what kind of culture you want in the organization but also practice that yourself so he used to practice that himself so how he used to act thrifty when he used to travel he used to stay in hotels that were very cheap so that were for $40 uh, per night instead of the hotels that cost that were costing $75 $80 per night um, then um, another important aspect or other important responsibility that the top managers they need to fulfill that is the monitoring their business environments next we'll see the um, responsibilities and duties of the middle managers 
middle managers who are middle managers they're the plant managers they're the regional managers or they are the divisional managers so middle managers need to plan and allocate resources to meet the objectives we see that the the long-term objectives of the company they're being drawn by the top managers when they're giving the vision and mission of the company they're the long-term objectives and then we have the uh, so the long-term objectives roughly constitute around 15 to 20 years long-term plans when we are talking about the middle managers and the uh, plans that they are formulating to achieve organizational objectives we are talking about medium-term plans or intermediate plans which constitute from five to seven to eight years right so the middle managers are responsible to formulate such plans and then they are responsible to formulate the um, uh, to coordinate the activities of the different departments of the different divisions of the different units within the same division right so, so they act as coordinators between those different divisions and then monitor and manage the performance of subunits and manager who manages who report to them right and the managers who report to them so that uh, they are also responsible for monitoring and managing the performance of the different units of the different subunits of the different departments of different uh, branches within the same division and the first line managers who are uh, running those departments they are also reportable to them and they and the regional managers are responsible for their performance as well there to keep a track of their performance and the next responsibility of the middle managers is they need they implement changes or strategies that are generated by top managers. They need to make sure that those changes are being implemented which were designed or which were given by the top managers. Here again I have a very interesting example again from uh, Walmart. Andy Wilson who is the regional vice president of Walmart. He visits the Walmart stores which means that the department, departmental stores at the departmental level he visits those stores regularly to see if the products in the stores are placed in the shelves as they were strategically planned at the top level. So in order to see if the top level uh, strategies or the top level plans are being implemented, the middle level managers is which visiting the lower level that is the branch level or the department level to make sure that the strategies at the top level are being implemented. So he visits those stores regularly in order to see the product placement. He also see if the products, uh, some of the finished products, whether they are ordered in time once he visited one Walmart store and he saw that some of the shelves were empty and uh, he came to know from the department manager that the order was placed late that is why the shelves were empty so he immediately asked the department manager not to wait for the order to arrive from the warehouse of the company but to get it arranged from the nearest Walmart location so that the shelves can be uh, the products in the shelves they can be replaced immediately quickly right so um, that is that, that is the what he is doing here he is monitoring the performance of the different subunits and also monitoring the performance of the managers who are um, uh, who are working in those units or in those departments <laughs> um, then um, we have another example from Walmart from the Andy Wilson what he used to do was that in order to see if the policies have been implemented uh, as they were formulated he goes to the nearest competition the nearest the closest competitor of Walmart is Kmart he visits Kmart very regularly and um, once what he did was that he was visited the Kmart store and he saw that in uh, near some of the products they had placed they had compared the prices of some of the products with the uh, Walmart prices so he purchased those products took them to the uh, counter of uh, Walmart and scanned those products and saw that the products of Walmart were around twenty dollars cheaper than the products of Kmart. Would it had it been that the products of Kmart were twenty dollars cheaper than those of Walmart, he would have reduced the prices of the Walmart products as well to at least twenty dollars so that to make the Walmart products cheapest. Why was it because or why would have it have been because the Walmart's slogan is or its strategic objective is to be the cheapest in the market. They are in the line of business with this uh, vision and with this mission that they are, uh, they, they, they are to offer the most competitive prices in the market. So in order to uh, make sure that that slogan was being met, he did 
all this exercise. Then we see the responsibilities of the first line managers. We have the office manager, we have the shift supervisor, we have the department manager, they are all the first line managers. So first line managers are basically managing the non-managerial employees as you could see. But the other two categories of managers, they are managing the managerial employees. Middle managers, they are managing the first line managers. Right? And the first line managers, they are managing the shop floor workers or the entry level employees. So what are their responsibilities? They, they just need to manage the performance at the entry level of the employees. So for, for that, what they do is that they make the short term goals or the short term objectives of, the, uh, of, the, of their departments. So they make short term plans, we could say. So short term plan can be up to one year long. Right, so they, for example, they give sales target to their uh, to a sales representative or their sales team, or they give the uh, ta uh, targets to their telemarketing re representatives that they have to, for example, make this much phone calls in this much time. So they uh, make the uh, ta they give the performance targets to their employees. They encourage them on how on how they can perform their tasks more effectively and how it can be more mm, uh, rewarding for the. Uh, for the employees so they teach entry level employees how they have to do their jobs effectively and they have them designing and making their schedules and their operating plans so the marketing managers they can for example track the phone calls of the telemarketing representatives to see whether the um, the telemarketing representative is delivering all the contents uh, of the product or, or the service that the company is providing to the client uh, in true spirit or as per strategically planned by the organization. Then we have the responsibilities of team leaders. Uh, team leaders is the lowest level. So we need to differentiate between the responsibilities of the team leader and that of the first line manager. We see that first line manager is normally also responsible for the management of human resources that is about their hiring and firing decisions about their performance appraisals about their compensation management uh, right and uh, about their retention about their trainings and stuff like that but on the other hand the team leader is mainly responsible for facilitating the team for facilitating the members of the team to provide them the environment to provide them the resources that they need to carry on with their tasks Right? So the uh, responsibilities of the team leader are, are different from the responsibilities of the manager or the first line manager. So the team leader it just is a facilitator of team performance. Team leader is not responsible for team performance. Right? He is just a facilitator of team performance. Team members are responsible for team performance. Then uh, the team leader needs to manage the external relations. If there are, for example, two teams working in an organization and their tasks are interdependent, that is one team has to perform a certain task uh, or it has to prepare a certain part in a product and then it moves to the second team and then only then the second team can do its part, uh, its part of the job. Uh, then what happens here is that if they, they, it is possible that since the tasks are interdependent be between the two teams, the conflict can arise between the two teams or between the two uh, the members of the two teams. So here it comes the role of the team leaders. The team leaders of team A, for example, and team leader of team B, they need to sit together and they need to resolve that conflict. And similarly, the conflict can also arise within the team, within the members of the team that are working. There can be certain conflict by arising between them. So the team leader again is responsible for smooth working of the team and res resolution of the conflict between the team members. Uh, there are different managerial roles that can be um, uh, that that will be seen here. For the first one is the interpersonal, which is. Um, uh, and the second one is informational and the third one is decisional let's see what are the different interpersonal roles that the managers perform first the manager acts as a figurehead managers perform ceremonial duties for example there is opening ceremony uh, the, uh, an organization is opening a new department and there is an opening ceremony for that department so the manager is performing that role of going to the opening ceremony uh, cutting the ribbon and um, uh, announcing the department uh, open right and then uh, we have the uh, second role that is being performed by the manager is that of a leader managers as we discussed earlier they need to be 
uh, good leaders they need to motivate and encourage their workers to accomplish their objectives to accomplish their tasks right and then the next role that is being performed by the managers is that of a of liaison they deal with the people who are not only within their units who are not only their subordinates or their fo followers but also with the other units they frequently need to deal with other departments with the people from the other units then we have the informational roles that are being performed by the managers we, the first one is the monitor they need to scan the environment for information they need to const be constantly in touch with the external environment with the changes taking place in the environment and make note of those changes getting information from the external environment from their competitors from their customers from their suppliers and so on then the second one they need to be disseminate they perform the role of disseminator of those that the information that they get from the environment or from their um, uh, it could be information from any source they need to be they are the disseminators of those inf that information to their department to their subordinates right and to their company so they also perform the role of spokesperson they share information with others outside their departments or companies such as uh, for example holding the agms and will general meetings with the uh, with the shareholders they they are acting as the spokesperson they are in sharing the uh, company's financial statements for example company's fi financial results the company's progress uh, or announcement of uh, uh, for example bonuses uh, then the, there are the decisional roles that are being performed by the managers the first one is the entrepreneur they of course they need to adapt to the incremental changes that are taking place in the organization in the external environment they need to adapt to those incremental changes um, in order to keep pace with the external environment then they also play the role of disturbance handler they respond to problems that demand immediate action um there there can be a number of problems there can be a number of disturbances that can arise in the organization for example a ceo of a company is changed and it uh, it uh, it brings a lot of disturbance in the organization how the manager needs to handle that uh, has to handle that this is the role that is being played decisional role that is being played by the manager then the manager also acts as resource allocators which department for example needs to get how much resources within the same department which employee needs to get how much resources depending upon the tasks of the employees depend, depending on the different job responsibilities of the employees different employees may need different resource allocations and the manager um, uh, does that then we have the negotiator managers negotiate schedules projects goals outcomes resources and raises right so they enter into negotiations for when it comes to the performance appraisal of the employees when it comes to the salary negotiations they can enter into negotiations with the labor unions they can be enter into negotiations with their suppliers with their creditors with the bank so there can be a number of parties with whom the manager can play this role then there are a few important skills that the companies look for in managers the first one is the technical skills um the second is the conceptual skills then we have the human skills and we have the motivation to change here we see that uh, technical skills um, is the ability to ap apply the specialized procedures techniques and knowledge required to get the job done so it means that technical skills are the skills that need that an employee or that a manager that he needs to have to get the job done so skills related to the task to the fulfillment of the task then we have the human skills the ability to work well with other people the ability to deal with other people conceptual skills the ability to see the organization not in parts but as a whole to see the organizational strategy as a whole not at the lowest level not at the level of the department how the different parts they affect each other how the different units affect each other how the different teams affect each other how they are integrated with each other how the company is working in relation to its external environment then motivation to manage an assessment of how enthusiastic employees are about managing work of others we see that uh, what companies look for companies of course do not uh, look for the managers who have unidimensional skills or the manager who has one of these skills they need a good blend of all these skills in a manager so effective manager would be one who possesses some of all these skills but the skills uh, the different at the different levels of managers different skills can be critical so as we see here in this graph um, the top uh, uh, technical skills are highly important for the team leaders because the team leaders are the people who have to directly take the work from the teams from the team members <clears throat> so they need to be very technical they need to be very strong on the technical aspects of uh, of the uh, project or of the work or of the task right and <clears throat> 
first time managers also need to have good understanding of the task of the contents of the task of the skills that are needed to perform that task but the top managers and the middle managers may not need to know about the technical aspects of the work as much as the first line and the team managers and the team leaders because first line managers and the team leaders are the people who have to get that work done through the employees directly human skills of course human skills as you can see here from the graph they are equally important at all levels of management conceptual skills they are important more important for the top level managers because they have to design the corporate strategy of the organization at the highest level so they need to see the different parts of the organization in integration with each other and in integration to the external environment so therefore they are most important for the top managers they are a little lesser important for the middle managers and they are least important for the team leaders and then motivation to change again is most important for the top managers because they have to take commitment from the employees they have to send signals to the lower levels of the management so it is most important for the top managers and then for the middle managers then for the first line managers and least for the team leaders common mistakes that managers make they are uh, here uh, there are a few mis i have pointed out a few mistakes that the managers make which need to be effect need to be avoided to become effective managers so um, i'll fastly go through these for the first one is the ins ins being insensitive to others cold aloof and arrogant behavior to other employees betrayal of trust uh, it, it is not necessary that you are uh, if you are uh, uh, if you have not been able to fulfill your promise with your employee you have betrayed the trust of employee you will betray the trust of the employee when if you have not fulfilled the promise of the employee you are not even uh, communicating with the employee on that or telling the employee or excusing the employee for that or giving him a justification for why uh, you could not be able to fulfill the promise and what is the next plan so um, uh, similarly if you're overly ambitious you're constantly searching out for other jobs that's that's a wrong practice by the manager because then the manager cannot work that well or that effectively within the organization if he's constantly looking for other jobs then specific performance problems with the business over managing unable to delegate or build a team it is important for managers to delegate tasks to make a team to de delegate them to the team instead of doing all that himself or herself unable to staff effectively of course uh, if they are unable to um, uh, design effective selection procedures unable to think strategically unable to adapt to boss with different style and over dependent on advocate or mentor so um, here we see uh, that uh, the how do the managers expectations they change over time when they are initially when they just become the managers they think that they are the boss they have the formal authority right they need to manage the tasks and job is not managing people this is most very important that they consider that the job uh, their job is not managing people that but their job is managing the task but after six months of becoming the manager they start understanding that their initial expectations they were wrong they their work their work is more and more fast paced they are really overloaded with the work they are they have, they have lots of phone calls they have lots of emails they have many many people to meet on an average it has been reported that the middle managers they receive around they have to do around 70 different tasks in one hour right and they are every after every 2 minutes they are interrupted by uh, someone who has come to meet them or by some phone call during their task so they have heavy workload so uh, their job is to be a problem solver and troubleshooter this is what they realize after six months of management and then when one year has passed they completely understand that it's it's no their job is no longer that of a doer their communication listening positive reinforcement is required to get the work done through people and the task their job is not to manage tasks their work is job is to manage people and that can be done through com better communication through listening and positive enforcement and learning to adapt and control stress and job is people development so competitive advantage of course it can be gained through people uh, we'll be discussing this in our next uh, lectures here are a few practices that can lead to effective people or that can lead to development of the human resources that can contribute to the competitive advantage uh, of the organization such as if you provide employment security if you 
make your hiring hiring procedures very selective if you promote the employees from within then they know that it gives them an encouragement and gives them the signals that the organization cares about them and that they are being developed and trained and they can be promoted tomorrow high wages contingent on organizational performance right and then training and skill development of the employees reduction of status differences for example the same cafeteria for the blue collar and white collar workers and sharing of the information with the employees because imp and the participation and empowerment as well not only the sharing the information but also providing them the autonomy to uh, uh, participate and to make their decisions so this was all for uh, today's lecture um, I hope you enjoyed this lecture and I hope it was really informative for you we um, will be discussing how to manage strategically for our next lecture thank you